Okay, I'm going to do that last example, and this shouldn't take much more than five minutes at the most. Um, so we're taking a look at this. We're going to determine the solution for an equation. Again, we're going 0 to 2 pi, so we're going all around um, one full rotation. Uh, and we got issues going on here. I get a sine x, and I get a cos of 2x. Um, now, that's not looking good, but cos of 2x I can change. And I have options for cos of 2x. Um, cos of 2x can be... Cos of 2x can be cos squared theta minus sine squared theta, or in this case x's, uh, or it can be 2 cos squared theta minus 1, or it can be 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Okay, so I have to pick one of those. Well, I told you before that it's best if we put it into um, all of the same trig ratio. We need to get it all in, in either sines or coses or tans. Uh, so probably, since I can't swap this out for anything, I need to turn this into sines. So I'm going to change that into 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. <clears throat> now, uh, if you want to get good communication marks, you're going to say something like using a double angle formula dot 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 uh, here's what we get we get 3 sine x plus 3 and we don't want cos 2x anymore because cos of 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared x uh, and then that's going to equal 2 so let's rearrange. We get 3 sine x plus 3 minus 6 sine squared x equals 2. This is looking quadratic, um, but I've got a negative in front of the squared term. So I'm going to rearrange it to get 0 on this side. So I get 6 sine squared x, and I'm going to have a negative 3 sine x and then this 3 subtracts on both sides to give me a negative 1. And I'm just going to move that over because that looks a bit ridiculous. So we'll move this over here. Um, and now what do we do with it? Well, this folks does not actually factor. I'm sorry to tell you, but you're going to have to use the quadratic formula. Now, I'm not going to make a substitution like I did in the last two. I'm not going to say that this equals n. I'm going to do it without that because I think that you are fully capable of doing it without that. So I'm going to say using the quadratic formula. Bum, bum, bum. Using the quadratic formula, here's our a, b, and our c. This is a this is b, and this is c. Um, but we're not finding x this time, we're finding sine x. So sine x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 ac all divide by 2a. And negative of negative 3 is positive 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared is 9 minus 4 times 6 times negative 1, be careful with your negatives, people screwed up right around there, uh, 2 times our a value is 6. So if you do all your work correctly, you're going to get 3 plus or minus the square root of 33 divided by 12, which in turn, when you plug into your calculator, is going to give you um, 0 0.729 or negative 0 0.229. Now, what do we do with that? Well, I know that sine x equals 0 0.729. And I know that sine is positive in quad 1 and quad 2. So I know that I have an angle here and an angle here that are this and this um, that are going to have a sine of 0.729. Um, so let's actually uh, use go on the calculator. We do inverse sine, sine to the negative 1. 
and the calculator gives us an answer of 0 0.817 rads. And so it gave us this one. So we're going to call that x1. It gave us 0 0.817 rad. Well, if I use the symmetry of the circle, I know that this over here, if I reflect it across this axis, you can't see my hand. Too bad. I'm doing nice little flips across here. This is 0 0.817 right in here again. So pi minus 0 0.817 is what this swoop here is going to be. So my x2 is going to equal pi minus 0 0.817 rads, which turns out to be 2.325. Oh, and I'm already past five minutes. That's too bad. I thought I could keep it under five. Um, now the next one, we know that sine x equals negative 0 0.229. So now I know what quad those are in. I know, and I'm going to um, draw it down over here. I know that the quad that's in has to be here and here. And it gave me this negative 0.229. So it gave me this thing in here, 0 0.229. It gave me the rotation that way. Now I don't want that. I want this and I want this. So how am I going to get those two? Well. Um, to get x, and in this case it's going to be x3, and I'm writing in red because I'm going to do this red swoopy. Uh, so that's pi plus, now if I reflect that over there, this angle in here, just this little angle in here, is going to be 0 0.229 because I'm reflecting it. Remember, this is the mirror line, so that there is 0 0.229. So x3 is going to be pi plus 0 0.229, which is... Um, oh crap, did you catch my mistake there? I forgot to do inverse sine. Uh, it's not going to change a whole lot and that's one of the reasons because my notes don't have, um, have a number very close to it. If I do sine to the negative 1, I actually get negative 0.231. One, <laughs> So I had to do inverse sine first of this number here. Um, maybe I should write that out, especially since I've made a mistake. To get x, you have to do sine to the negative 1 of negative 0 0.229, which is negative 0 0.231. So that's going to change this and this. And this is going to be 0 0.231. And so my x, we're going to call it 3. And I'm no longer writing in red, but now I'm going to be. Um, I need to do pi plus, remember this thing goes over here. So this is 0 0.231 as well. So pi plus 0 0.231, which equals 3.373. And my very last x, x to the fourth, or the fourth x, uh, it's not quite one full rotation. It's this little bit past from it. Uh, let's do it in green since it was a green swoop. It's going to be 2 pi minus 0 0.231, uh, which if you just punch that into the calculator, just it's going to be 6.28 minus 0 0.231. So it's 6.052. And that completes this example.